respectable campaign. Aimed at promoting a high level of pride, sportsmanship and honor. These welcome players, coaches, and fans of our opponents with great respect and the wonderful hospitality that can and will be the hallmark of bulls everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please join us as we honor America and those who protect it. Please rise for the playing of our national anthem by the USF Rumble Pepe. Well, with weather dominating the headlines, we have quickly scurried off to the state of Florida. Sunshine State for a reason. Reasonable temperatures, I'm told, room temperature inside the Yingling Center today as the Bulls welcome the Bearcats of Cincinnati to town. Take a look at this matchup, Cincinnati against USF. The Bulls have won the last 11 meetings, but it's the Bearcats this year that find themselves as the favorite. They are one of your top three teams in the American standings right now. Bearcats riding a four-game winning streak into Tampa, while USF, again, injury plagued this year, along with some illnesses. It all adds up to just two victories in the early slate here in conference play. Welcome in on the American Digital Network. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck with you. And, Coach, we saw USF in their last outing. It was a week ago. They've had some rest now that lost in Dallas against SMU. They go up against a very talented Cincinnati squad, a new head coach at the helm, but the winning ways continue for the Bearcats. Well, look for USF to be confident at home. They're eight and two at home. They feel really good in this building and they shoot the ball extremely well. But they have a very hot, as in red hot, team coming to town. Like you, like you indicated, they've won four in a row. They let, look for them to set the tempo with their defense and do the little things that got them here. In fact, those only two losses for Cincinnati were to the top two teams in the league right now, UConn and UCF. For them to get the win today, what do they need to accomplish here in Tampa? Well, the Bearcats, what they need to do is guard and transition, contest the three-point shooting, and also their defense needs to create their offense. As for the Bulls, how does Jose Fernandez and that short bench find a win here at home sweet home? Well, they missed a bunch of free throws the other night and probably could have won, so hit some free throws, rebound the basketball, they're number four in the country, and establish their post game. Well, the question this offseason was who would step up after the graduation of Anna Owens. The answer has been Antoinette Miller. Well, Antoinette Miller, she's a junior guard, and she has had career numbers this past week. Uh, she was shoot, shooting 20, her career high 21 points versus Houston, 5 of 10 shooting, and 8 from 8 from the free throw line. Meanwhile, across the way for the Bulls, I know you have your eye on Tamara Henshaw coming off back-to-back double-doubles last week. Well, back-to-back double-doubles is right, but it doesn't matter. She, she's doing it all for them. Uh, she had 16 points and 11 rebounds. She's pouring her heart and soul on in every game right now for them. It's two of the perennial powers here in the American colliding tonight in Florida. The Bulls and Bearcats opening tip when we come back on the American Digital Network.
How do you drive impact for 200 years? By doing it boldly, by building a bridge, breaking a barrier, planting a flag, owning a stage. Because here, we learn by doing and believe the status quo was built to be broken. So be proud, be bold, be Cincinnati. We're two centuries in and we're still creating what's next. We are Boldly Bearcat. Just about set to go for opening tip inside the Yingling Center. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck with you. Take a look at the starting lineups for both squads for Michelle Clark Hurd and the Bearcats, a familiar group of five for the Bulls and Jose Fernandez. I know they're tired of us mentioning this, but they are without essentially 50 points per game with all the injuries that they have sustained throughout the year. In fact, only Sidney Harvey, the freshman, has made every start this season. For the first time today, we get a chance to introduce the third member of our team along the sidelines tonight, Andy Wontor. Andy? Well, Lincoln, USF is in a position they aren't used to being in. They're the underdogs. They've had nine different lineups this season, and tonight, as is the norm nowadays, they only have eight dressed out with five freshmen. And that is against a red-hot Cincinnati team that actually has zero freshmen on the roster. According to head coach Michelle Hurd clark in her first season with the Bearcats, says that that kind of experience has really helped her out in her transition to becoming the head coach of the Bearcats. So tell us, who are you rooting for? You rooting for the Bulls or are you rooting for Cincinnati? Let us know on Facebook Live and we will be reaching out to you during the game. A great reminder there from Andy that Cincinnati in fact has zero freshmen on its lineup in the first year under head coach Michelle Clark Hurd. Her second go-around here with Cincinnati, she was an assistant back in the 2000s before taking the head job at her alma mater at Western Kentucky where she led the Hilltoppers to some NCAA tournaments and some conference championships along the way. Cincinnati has won four in a row. They are five and two in conference. They are trying to end an 11-game losing skid against these Bulls. We were in Tulsa last night, and so was Maj Forsberg. Oh, yeah. She has been getting around. She got that game last night that we saw between Tulsa and Temple, and hopefully able to catch some sleep on the plane. Ready to go here with Frank Steratore and Tierra Cruz. I think they're ready to go back and have a little timeout, but it's a little clock issues that they're having at the scores table. Again, Bulls have had the full week off. Last time we saw them in action, it was right here on the American Digital Network against SMU. Travis Mays' squad picked up their program's first ever win against USF in their brief history. A lot of teams are trying to get in their shots against an otherwise year in, year out powerhouse here in Tampa. Trying to take advantage of one year that they're a little shorthanded. And let's see if we're still having a clock issue. Well, look for Cincinnati to really push their tempo. They have a lot of people who can score on their team, and uh, they do have a high-octane offense, so they're going to press, press, press. But but like I, like I said before, Michelle Clark Hurd has never brought a team here to USF. She doesn't really know what, how good they play here, so it's going to be an interesting night. Well, one of the newest head coaches in the American this year, Michelle Clark Hurd, mentioned that she was an assistant on this Bearcat staff from 2002 to 2005 as a head coach. Now six straight 20 win seasons helped lead her alma mater, Western Kentucky, to the postseason on a regular basis. Won four tournament titles, two regular season titles, ultimately four trips to the big dance, trying to get the Bearcats back. Of course, last year we saw the Bearcats as a WNIT team for the first time since 2012. Yes, it's a good it's a good team coming back, and they have 66% uh, of their offense and, and rebounding back. So it's really not a surprise that they were picked. It's the highest uh, pick that they've had all year. Meanwhile, all Jose Fernandez has done is, uh, well, last year he was your conference coach of the year here in the American. A couple of decades at the helm now in Tampa. What a job he has done defining this program. Six straight 20-win campaigns the last four years at large bids into the NCAA tournament each time colliding with UConn in the conference championship in March. 
Well, this is probably one of his most challenging coaching years. As Frank Steratore with the call. Frank's dad. Frank Steratore Sr. Uh, again, this is a big officiating family, the Steratores. He's got cousins, including Gene Steratore, that you'll recognize from the NFL on Sundays. And some familiar faces for us uh, week in and week out working these games in the American and around the country. Pahadzic fires up an early three ball, won't go, tipped around. USF, even with the injuries, they're one of the better rebounding teams in the country, but can't come up with that one. Well, especially on that offensive end, the guards go and they rebound. Everyone's focused on it, and it's really tough to come up with a defensive rebound. This is Antoinette Meller. She'll work it inside. We have a great feature on her a little bit later on in the broadcast as the rebound, or pardon me, the shot off the mark from Chelsea Warren, the senior out of Texas. Well, both teams are wanting to push the tempo here early. You can see Coach Fernandez urging his team on to get the ball down the floor. Back out to Luisa Septe. And we've got a hold on Cincinnati. Luisa Septe joined the Bulls midseason at the end of December, and that was a bit of a blessing for Jose Fernandez, who is already down. Again, almost half his roster, but yet another freshman that he is able to work in the lineup, and she's now made six starts in eight appearances. Yeah, I think he just would like to get a little bit more offense out of her. They are struggling to produce, uh, you know, tons of points here, and they've lost a few games uh, by just not being able to put enough players' points on the board. Hadjic will benefit on that call as the defender was inside the restricted arc. This will be taking the foul Fofo Sifa, the junior college transfer out of Burundi. Watching USF play, I really think Enna Pahadzic is, is really the key. If, if she can come off and be shooting well early for them, uh, it really stretches out the defense. If she struggles, it seems just that they all struggle. So I, I think uh, watching her early will be something to see. Enna, one of the many international players, the sophomore from Denmark, makes both, both of her free throws. Six different countries, including the United States, represented on this Bulls roster. There's only one native Floridian on this program this year. A bit of a surprise because there's so much talent in the area, but Jose Fernandez has had so much luck with his international ties. Driving, looking for help. Nobody was there. Taking it herself, it is Florence Fofosifa. Well, Florence Fofosifa, she really, take, that's called taking it to the rack. I mean, that's, that's a, a direct line hit, and uh, that's the way they play. And Fofo came over from a Civil War tour country over there in Burundi. And that ball dances around and drops through for Luisa Septe, the freshman out of Latvia. Well, only averaging 3.1 points, uh, that's a needed bucket for these guys. And an offensive foul will send it back over to USF. Well, here's a Bulls team now. Wins at Temple at home against Tulane. We saw that one against Tulane. They, that was about as good as they have looked in conference play against Lisa Stockton's group. Understandably, losses against UCF and UConn, top two teams in the league this year. Uh, but low-scoring struggles with Memphis and SMU as well. Well, I think the Mem uh, SMU game, the 44-46 game, was a heartbreaker for them. I thought... They thought they really could win that one, but you can tell they're fired up for this one, and this is going to be a big battle. They've had a week to think about it. And that one on the money. What a start. Anna Pahadzic able to connect. In the past, Anna had just been a role player on this team. An ACL injury in the past had limited her last year. She has stepped up this season. In fact, had a double-double in her game against UConn. Again, just a sophomore in an expanded role. Well, he talked about putting her in the fray early, and uh, he's running a set for her off a double screen. She gets her feet set. She has the high archer, as we've talked before, and she salutes us as that one goes down. And that's what they need. She's fearless. She's the most improved player on their team, and uh, she needs to go. 
Well, Cincinnati doing something that UCF's not going to be able to do much of, and that is already subbing a couple off the bench. We mentioned Sifa is in. Puckett is in as well. And Deja Puckett, the sophomore out of Georgia, Griffin, Georgia, making her 21st appearance, most all of one of which off the bench this year. Cincinnati's still looking for some offense. Well, Fernandez, is a, he's an artist on defense, and they really have a good game plan set up. It's a good team defense. They're, they're, they're taking Cincinnati out of their game, out of their rhythm, and they really haven't found their sort yet here early on. Antoinette Miller's called for the offensive foul. By the way, early on, Cincinnati, both Riser and Warren have already picked up two quick fouls. That is why they are on the bench right now. That could be a huge storyline here. Inside, drawing the attention. And a shot won't go from Hadjic, one and done. Bearcats the other way. Right now with Sifa. And just holding their ground, a disciplined group here on defense. Well, that's called collapsing on the post. And once that ball went inside to Sifa on the post, they collapsed two players on her and ripped it away from her. Third turnover over the past two and a half minutes for the Bearcats. Back up top to Harvey. Shot from the elbow, no. Bearcats looking to end a drought, down by five early. And another one and done. And nice job defensively by Sam Rogers. Did everything but commit the foul there on Harvey. Looking for their first three. As Behadjic will back it back out. Midway through the opening quarter right now, USF hitting two of six. Cincinnati just one of seven. And the Bulls now able to stretch it to a seven-point advantage. That well, was a great drive by Septe, just putting her head down literally and driving straight to the hole. A 7-0 run for USF. Is Jose Fernandez playing zone up there, or is that man-to-man? -man? Uh, it looks like uh, rebounding. He's more focused on that. They are the number six team in the nation in the rebounding margin. Almost 12 more per ball game than their opponents. Well, Coach Fernandez could not want them to come out any better than they are. They, they've really come out lights out. Uh, Pahadzic was looking for her second triple, but off the mark. Inside to Thomas, last year's, uh, last year's conference freshman of the year, able to end the drought here for the Bearcats. And just like that, they're within two scores. Well, you wondered when she was going to come alive and when they would find her, and, and that was a great take. Sifa with the block will... Send both teams to their respective branches. Five point ball game early. American Athletic Conference women's basketball on display tonight here on the American Digital Network. How do you drive impact for 200 years? By doing it boldly, by building a bridge, breaking a barrier, planting a flag, owning a stage. Because here, we learn by doing and believe the status quo was built to be broken. So be proud, be bold, be Cincinnati. We're two centuries in, and we're still creating what's next. We are Boldly Bearcat. At The American, we know that power isn't for the faint of heart. Power is reserved for the go-getters, the team players, and those who are hungry for victory. We know power because we are power. 
Join us for the 2019 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship, March 8th through the 11th at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. for a fourth straight year. Cueso from 30! Unbelievable! And be able to celebrate this type of championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Well, it's a freshman and a sophomore right now leading USF, Pahadzic and Septe combining for all nine points for the Bulls here in their return home to Tampa. Chance for us to check back in with Andy. Well, Lincoln, I said earlier on that it was Cincinnati coming in red hot, but obviously USF has something to say about that. Actually, before tip-off, I talked with one of the USF coaching members who said that it's the one positive of youth is losses kind of roll off their back a little bit better than it is with the older players who can get in their head. So the question is, can USF keep it up? Are you rooting for the Bulls or are you rooting for Cincinnati? And where are you cheering us on from? Let us know on Facebook Live and we'll have your answers featured right here. Two starters for Cincinnati picked up early fouls, both Riser and Warren, each with two fouls early on. Right now on the bench with Angel Riser, the junior. That means you're without nine points, about six rebounds a ball game right now in this contest. USF and their fans aren't going to feel sorry for Cincinnati. Of course, they're without almost 50 points a game with all the injuries they have. No, I'm certain their game plan was to take it right at Cincinnati. You have to be aggressive in this situation. But I think Cincinnati needs to settle down a little bit. See, look for Amari Thomas. Get the ball inside to her because she's, she's money. Well, we always look forward to having these games that feature USF when it comes to fans participating in the chat on Facebook here on the American Digital Network. And we know we have a little bit more of an international viewership anytime the Bulls are involved. As three Bearcats collapse and uh, ultimately the rebound comes to Ilea Green. Well, Cincinnati's shown a little defense of their own. Great team defense on that series. Again, Bearcats, despite a lengthy drought, only trailed by two scores. Good rotation up top to Rogers out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Homegrown, went to Lakota East, the junior now. Here's Miller straight away. Just can't get the shots to fall yet. Yeah, USF is, is, is basically playing a SAG defense. They're playing a SAG defense. They're going behind any kind of pick, and they're going to give up that three ball because they, they believe that Cincinnati's not going to beat them from three, but they're going to beat them from the interior. So they're going to have to shoot a few threes and make a few threes to, uh, to crack this a little bit. Lisa Pinzon in the ball game. The Italian, one of the many freshmen this year, a five-star recruit, along with Beatrice Jordal, out of Portugal, who's not available tonight. Bearcats have only made one of their last eight shots. Under pressure, and that time free throws will be the outcome. Yeah, it looks like they uh, got a little frustrated on that USF, a little communication issue there, but... Uh, you know, defensively, they've really done well here the first uh, first quarter. Cincinnati was picked fifth this year in the preseason poll. Right now sits fourth in the league. Uh, talking to Michelle Clark Hurd, she, she said, look, the roster I have, almost every single player is in a different role than they had a year ago, and they have all embraced these new roles. And having that kind of buy-in, including from a player like Akira Goings, is something that's going to help you find success. As Goings, a senior, senior's not always the most adaptable to yeah, change. Absolutely, and I think Shay Leverett uh, is a big key here too because she, she's a really good defender inside against Thomas. Looking for their second three, that one off the mark. The offensive rebound there came down to Leverett. And then blocked from behind. Bearcats contesting almost every shot. That time it was a Deja Puckett, the sophomore, with the rejection. 
Well, Lincoln, they're letting them play here tonight. Uh, definitely very physical in there. Uh, bodies are being thrown left and right, and uh, they're letting them play. Michelle Clark heard, also impressed with how well these players for the Bearcats are able to digest a scouting report and implement it. And the Bulls held scoreless now for three minutes. And the Bearcats are back within a single score. Well, that's what they want to do is let their defense uh, create their offense and, and push in transition. And that's the first transition bucket of the game. Trying to force it inside, and it's going to be a turnover. This one brought up by Rodgers. Rodgers, after the steal, trying to finish with the left hand, and ultimately the Bulls will hang on to this two-point advantage as we enter the final minute of the opening quarter. Rotation, and it's going to be Pinzon who fires up the three. Well, when Pinzon goes in the game for, for Anna, she's going to she's gonna look to fire it up, and that, that's a good take. Elisa Pinzon becomes just the third scorer for USF today here in the opening quarter. And the Bulls can hold for the final look. Flying to that ball was Rodgers. It'll stay with USF. Again, Cincinnati's won four straight. Started conference play one and two, but those only two losses now have been to UConn and UCF, who have been fantastic to start league play this year. The real battle is to try to get one of the top four seeds, and, well, we have learned the third seed is that much more valuable than the fourth seed because... You have a chance to meet UConn in the championship as opposed to the semifinals. Yeah, Sydney Harvey's had kind of a quiet first quarter. I was shocked that on that pass in, she didn't go for that. So look for her to turn it up. Ten minutes in the books tonight. A Wednesday evening matchup in Tampa in the American Athletic Conference. Second quarter win. We come back. The Bulls at home. Up by fun. At the American, we know that power isn't for the faint of heart. Power is reserved for the go-getters, the team players, and those who are hungry for victory. We know power because we are power. Join us for the 2019 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship, March 8th through the 11th at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. for a fourth straight year. Quasho from 30! Unbelievable! And be able to celebrate this type of championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Just about ready to go for the start of the second quarter. Hope wherever you're tuned in that you are inside and warm. Again, in Tampa, it's 52 degrees, but back on the Cincinnati campus, it's in single digits, not counting the wind chill. 
73 degrees back up there in Ohio, but again, about 72 degrees as we check back in with Andy here in Sun. With the Bearcats this season, they're actually currently ranked third in the standings. Now, she's coming back as a first-year head coach here with the Bearcats. However, she did have six seasons with Western Kentucky before this. But the question is, she was with the Bearcats before as an assistant coach. So how many NCAA postseason bursts in the tournament did she have while she was with Cincinnati? That question and all the answers coming up. Again, our first bit of trivia that Andy gives you to chime in in the comments section. How many postseason trips did the Bearcats make when Michelle Clark Hurd was an assistant on the staff? That was from 2002 to 2005. Well, right now it's a five-point ball game, and you can essentially say, Angela, the difference is a couple of made three-pointers from USF early on. Well, pretty much, and basically USF is daring a Cincinnati to shoot the three, and they haven't made one yet. So look for them to continue to pack it in until Cincinnati can pull that trigger. Right now Cincinnati's gone to a 2-3 zone to kind of mix it up to see if they can get these guys a little off kilter. And that just opens it up for, uh, for uh, Harvey on the outside. See if the Bearcats can have an answer. They had trimmed the deficit down to two when it was 9-7. Uh, the Bulls since then on a 6-0 run. Trying to save it, but stepping out along the baseline. So the Bearcats cannot answer the three ball. Instead, a turnover. Well, I think what is really remarkable is... Hernandez has stayed with this man-to-man -man defense with this really young green team that he re he really hasn't worked with as much as his 50 points of offense, and they're 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 executing this defense flawlessly, and and Cincinnati's having a very difficult time trying to score against it. He keeps threatening that he may mid-game switch it to zone if they get into foul trouble, but we haven't seen that be the case. Well, because I don't think all the coaches tell the truth. I mean, you know, they make you think they're going to do that just to kind of have you prepare for it in practice. So again, the Bulls right now a 6-0 run to start the second quarter back at home. Feed inside, and they will take that every time down as they dial up Shea Leverett, the sophomore. Well, that's a, a senior pass right there. That's that's a little floater, a little touch pass, as we call it, and it's right on the money. Well, when you lose players to injury, the question is, who steps up? It's been Leverett getting more minutes in place of Beatrice Jordan. And there we go. Cincinnati with an answer finally. Yeah, her foot's inside the line, but that's the first outside uh, stroke that I've seen them take. Pass was just a tad long, and it's back over to Cincinnati. Can they continue to trim this deficit? Inside to Thomas, and a confident turnaround won't go for the sophomore. And for a closer look with Rogers. Well, they're definitely let you, letting you body up. They bodied up inside against Thomas. And then on the outside, they're just flailing around. These guys are, you know, they're not doing it pretty, but they don't have to. What they're doing is just disrupting uh, what Cincinnati wants to do. Cincinnati with the turnover as Puckett was not ready for the pass from Goings. Puckett will check out, see if it back on. You know, it's, it's been a pretty spread offense for USF. You just wonder, you know, when Harvey's going to turn it up a notch. Michelle Clark heard saying, if you're being given the basketball that close to the rim, we need points instead of the turnover. Uh, Bulls, meanwhile, one and done. And again, it's last year's freshman of the year, Mari Thomas with the rebound, the sophomore out of Oakland, California. Thomas will hand it off up top to Rogers. This is their wheel offense. A 15-footer good for Goings. I like that, that offense right there. It was a little more dribble penetration, a little more guard movement. Cincinnati looking for a stop. Back within two scores on the road. And again, they're able to get the easy look for Shea Leverett when she catches it that low in the post at 6-2, the sophomore money. 
Well, they're not just selling for the three-point. We talked in the pregame. I said one of the things they need to do is establish their postgame. They're doing it now. They're mixing it up, which is, is uh, causing them difficulty. Now it's going to free up their three-point shooters. Bearcats right now. Goings, Riser, Rogers, Thomas, and C for the five on the floor for Michelle Clark Hurd. And a 16-footer this time goes down for Goings. And she has the last four for the Bearcats. Well, Goings, is, she has steady progress every single year. She had a sprained ankle against UConn. She's just coming back, and her offense looks really good. Only three different Bearcats have scored so far. Goings off the bench with seven tonight. Rebound by Riser. And the whistle. I'm going to send it the other way. Yeah, I think Leverett is, is saying, hey, uh, here's, a, here's a drive. You know, we, they've missed several free throw uh, layups, uh, but, but that time they locked, interlocked arms and got the foul. And Jose Fernandez right now with 11 wins this year. Six straight 20 win campaigns. Certainly still within reach to find a seventh. And another turnover forced by that baseline. Well, Henshaw got her body kind of set. It was a little bit movie, you know, but uh, no call there. So, and the Bulls was six internet. Uh, pardon me, six countries represented, including the United States. But you're you're without national team players like Loxa and Ferreira for their respective home countries, and then another four players who are. Spending their summer playing for the U-20 teams for their countries. A nice pull up, but it just won't go down. Thomas battling every bull on the team photo, it would seem. And Amari Thomas gets it to go. Well, it's, it's her strength and her muscle and uh, her tenacity. She won't be denied down there. On the end, other end here, USF has 3 of 11 on its layups. So they've had, like the last series down, you got to make those. They, you know, these are little bu bunnies that they should be making. It's time. Settle for a look from three. Leverett fighting for the rebound, but back over to the Bearcats. Leverett was a big part of their scoring in the paint. Right now, USF hanging on to a four-point lead. It's Bearcats basketball. When we resume action with 4.44 to go. Chance for us to check back in with Andy Courtson. We've talked about all the different kind of lineups that the USF Bulls have had this season. Nine different lineups. The only constant, the only starter for every single game is a freshman, Sydney Harvey. And talking about Harvey, she's not only doing good being a constant starter, she is doing very good, especially on the free point line. She leads the conference in free throw percentage at 88.7% entering the night. So the question is, who has the best season long free throw percentage in American history? Let us know the answer. Give you a hint. You might be in that shot right there. Four point lead for the Bulls. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is a means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health. And promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind.
Bull fans taking in this one. They have not seen many losses, especially in that young lady's lifetime at the Yangling Center. Take a look at where our standings are here in 2019. Well, we had two 6-0 teams up until Sunday night. You saw it on ESPN2. UConn with the decisive win as they are now 7-0 all by themselves, number two in the nation in both polls. UCF continues to receive votes, but there's Cincinnati on a four-game winning streak right behind them. Yes, and, and let's talk about the implications of this game here after we see that shot right there. Well, Nakira Goings, double digits, 10 points off the bench, just yep. keeping Cincinnati in this one. Definitely the hottest player on Cincinnati's team. But, yes, Cincinnati is trying to maintain their third-place position. But for USF, they win this one, they can move up to fifth place. And if they lose it, they're down to 11th place. So this, this means big implications here. Anna Pahadzic able to answer with a three of her own. Yeah, outside of those top two teams, a whole lot can happen over the next month. Well, I mean, you go from two losses to three losses, uh, it takes you, you know, pretty far down the stretch, you know. So... Last night we saw a Tulsa team at three and three had they won would have quickly climbed up the standings instead Temple has put together back-to-back -to -back wins Aaliyah Butts was fantastic yesterday with a career high and uh, that is a group that they can play like they have their last two games now uh, they could start messing up plans of their opponents it just goes to show you my theory on coaching that great players do make great coaches and when you have a great player like Aaliyah Butts going off for what she have? 34, 34, 34, yeah. 34 points. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, your, your team looks super good. So um, what team, what what players start picking up their pace a little bit right now is what, we, what we're looking for. I want to shortchange her. It was either 34 or 35, a new career high. The previous career high had been 30 as a freshman. The differences in the defenses here. Cincinnati's extending their defense. They're trying to deny the passing lanes. They're actually giving dribble penetration to them, but they're not. They're not necessarily scoring off it. A oh, one block, but ultimately the persistence will pay off for the Bulls. That was Henshaw right there uh, with a great left hand uh, putback. Difa had the initial rejection, but the Bulls able to follow it up. As that one will dance around and drop through for Miller. Well, I wonder when she was going to start hitting. She, she's been kind of silent, and she's a big part of this team. Junior from Detroit has made every start this year, one of two Bearcats to make all 21 starts. Angel Riser the other, but again, Riser today has been played with multiple fouls. She is back in the ball game right now. Warren has not returned with her two fouls, but that's two of your starters. Limited minutes here in the opening half, but they've battled back to tie this game up, and the Bearcats can claim a lead right here. Well, Cincinnati's mixing up their defenses. Now they're really denying and pushing everything out higher than they want to go, and that caused that turnover there. The Cats have played nine. Bulls have played seven. Thomas. You can forget about it. It's going down. She's like, you, yeah, uh-uh. Jose Fernandez wants to talk that one over. They gave Thomas an easy trip to the bucket right down the edge of the paint. Yeah, Shea, Shea didn't get over there quick enough, and she'll probably hear it from uh, Coach Hernandez. He, he doesn't play. I mean, if you're not there in good health position early and often, then you're probably not going to probably going to be sitting on the bench, but he doesn't have a bench to go to, so they get to still play. Mari Thomas now 11 points, four rebounds here in the first half. She and Goings have combined for 21 of the Bearcats, 26 points on the road tonight. Now, there's not a lot of contribution besides... Uh, you know, maybe one player, but uh, double digits for Goins and, and Thomas right now. Credit their teammates. They are they are rebounding, and right now a slight edge over USF, which is a rarity. That's the first lead of the game for Cincinnati, so they're starting to figure a few things out. It trailed by as many as 10. Was about six minutes ago. Hadjic. Unable to reclaim the advantage there. Into traffic, as that one wouldn't go for Miller. Picking up her dribble was Henshaw, but her teammates helped her out. Well, they're definitely smothering Harvey. They're not giving Harvey anything. They're saying, hey, somebody else can beat us, but 
Sifa's got her blanketed. Both teams unable to connect in the post with their targets. USF was looking for Leverett. The Bearcats, understandably, were looking for Thomas. Back over to the Bulls now. It's like you play the odds. It's like if you're Cincinnati, you're saying, if I just wear them out. Now, the other teams have tried this, and we've talked about this on air. Can you wear them out? But I, the way they're doing it right now, it could wear them out. Now now they're mixing it up to a 2-3 zone, which I'm kind of surprised with because the man-to-man -man was so effective. Inside to Pahadzic. How about that for a look? Yeah, I, I like all the switches that they made until they made that one because last time they went to a zone, Harvey hit one from the top. Now they hit slice, slice and dice right down the, right down the middle. So uh, I like their pressure a lot better. And now who spent a lot of her time around the perimeter today, two for five from beyond the arc on the receiving end of a great pass and a finish plus a free throw. To Anna from Denmark. Teammates from Italy, Portugal, Latvia, as well as Italy. Again, the ball was Sifa, the first year Bearcat. Two years of junior college in Texas at Jacksonville College. That's in East Texas, where a teammate's family really adopted her. I mean, we talk about all these international players, and we just take for granted that they can come to the state thousands of miles, separated literally by oceans from where they grew up, and still as teenagers just be able to go out about their business the same way as any other student athlete. Uh, but a big part of that is their teammates and their families in the states embracing them. Well, it's, it's a culture that you build, and obviously they've decided to build that culture, and people feel comfortable there. Nice little stop. The brakes work for Tamara Henshaw, and she'll pour in a pair. Henshaw coming off 15 points against SMU, 16 against Memphis last week, her career high. Back-to-back double-doubles, the player we featured at the start of this broadcast. And we may have a bloodied nose for Luisa Septe, the freshman. That'll be the, the least of the ailments for the Bulls to worry about this time of year. Yeah, hopefully she didn't crack it. But, yeah, uh, look, at, uh, look at Coach Hernandez trying to get some extra uh, time there. But, yeah, they, they belly up and then well, I, I guess she already got hit. So. Yeah, Rosenthal was tied up there. Yanetta Rosenthal, again, she was with the Latvian U-20 team this summer before she started her freshman campaign this season for Coach Fernandez. Last year's conference coach of the year. There are some pretty good coaches in this league, so for your peers to single you out as the top man or woman at the end of the campaign is quite the honor. Michelle Clark doing, her, Michelle Clark heard doing good things in her first year, obviously, in Cincinnati. Yeah, both of them are, are superb coaches, uh, Michelle Clark. I think the fun thing uh, about kind of building a program, even though they came off a winning year, it's still like it's, it's your program now. Uh, it's that everything's kind of new, and you really have their attention in that first year. So the sky's the limit. And, uh, you know, coaches that go in there and, and just take over and, and uh, take them to their – best of their ability it, you know this is what she's doing right now she's she's energizing them bringing in a new type of energy and uh, it's working for her remember the Bearcats made it to the semifinals after knocking off Tulsa in the quarterfinals but unfortunately as the four seed that meant they had to dance with UConn in the semifinals they would go on to play Michigan State in the WNIT Bulls also collided with UConn but did it as the number two seed once again meeting in the championship before going on to the NCAA tournament as an at-large bid. Four straight years, the NCAA tournament with Jose Fernandez and his Bulls. Mentioned eight WNITs. A reminder, trivia question right now. Who has the best free throw percentage for a season in American history? You've got four options there. The reason why we ask is right now, Sydney Harvey of the Bulls leads everybody in the American just for this year right now shooting 88.7%. I will mention the person who has the record hit 111 of 115. It was recent, and it's somebody that Sydney Harvey uh, probably follows on Instagram. Well, Cincinnati is now shooting the ball better than it has, and it's 42%, it's and that's what their average is for the year. Look, look for them to go down low here. 
Thomas already in double digits. Extra move. That one won't go. And they strip away the ball after the offense rebound from Riser. Riser, of course, has to be careful playing with two fouls. Half a minute to play. About eight seconds separating the two clocks right now. It's a quarter where Cincinnati has outscored USF 19-16. And whoever gets this ball can hold for the final shot. It is going back over. Yeah, Harvey's uh, getting a little frustrated because they are doubling up on her. She tried to split the difference that time, and they poked it from behind. And then she goes in there and, and draws the foul. Bearcats have shot 40% now for the ball game. Two of five from beyond the arc, and they are going to foul early. Try to set up, reset this defense as nobody in the bonus here. They're going to force Cincinnati to inbound the ball. Well, I bet Thomas or Goins is going to shoot it. What do you think? Let you know uh, in about 10 seconds. Okay. Miller, 15-footer. Put back, and the answer, yeah, I think Thomas will wind up with it. Somehow, some way. She's well, 20 minutes in the books, and we haven't determined anything. 28-28, Bearcats right now. The top teams in the American at five and two, but they've gone to Tampa where it's tough to steal a win from USF. Exciting first half. I, I think both teams should be pleased going in the locker room. Uh, you know, they've taken away the strengths of each other's team. Har Harvey's been blanketed, and they've had to work for everything in Cincinnati's side. Bulls coach Jose Fernandez is with Andy. Let's check in with them. Stop by and check out the merchandise store located just Coach Fernandez, he seemed a little frustrated at times with the tempo of the game and the way the girls were moving the ball down the court. What are you going to really tell them at the half to get them back in the The thing is, we're not making very good decisions adjusting to what they're in. They're doing a Cincinnati's doing a really, really good job changing their defenses. Going man, showing zone, and then making the switch and go back to zone. We got to do a much better adjustment of that. And as far as Imari Thomas, she has already in the double digits what is it going to take stopping her well we got to do a much better job blocking her out you know we got to get our perimeters down there to help help shade t out and any update on septa and how she did she was out of there no more here a little bit great thank you coach all right andy thank you and of course we'll keep an eye on the progress of louisa septa the most recent bull perhaps a little banged up 28-28 our score as we head to halftime. When we come back, we'll take a look around the league at some weekly honors as well as some first half stats and highlights here in Tampa. What's better, winning by a buzzer beater or blowing the team out? Buzzer beater, no doubt. It just gives different kind of emotions. The best memory should be my freshman year. No one guarding locks up, fires for three, swish. SMU stunned, and they have to take a timeout. Going through the college experience for the first time, going to the second round, playing with great teammates, having a great coaching staff, just the first experience itself. Which one of your teammates spends the most amount of time in front of the mirror? Laura. Look at her hair. Look at her hair. She flips her hair around, does her eyebrows as she mentioned. <laughs> There's a lot of mirror there. I love friends. I love Grey's Anatomy. I don't know, I like even cartoons. Like there's, there's a lot of stuff. South Florida, South Florida, go Bulls! How do you drive impact for 200 years? By doing it boldly. By building a bridge, breaking a barrier, planting a flag, owning a stage. Because here, we learn by doing and believe the status quo was built to be broken. So be proud, be bold, be 
Cincinnati. We're two centuries in, and we're still creating what's next. We are Boldly Bearcat. I wouldn't say I really model my game after anybody, but uh, I've always been like a huge fan of like Derrick Rose. Uh, he's always been one of my favorite players growing up, so. What's better, winning by a buzzer beater or blowing a team out? Definitely winning by a buzzer beater. I think that uh, it's far more fun playing a, a close game. Uh, when you're able to play in that tough game and compete to the last second, it's very exciting. What's your favorite Fortnite dance? <laughs> Can I get a little neck and out? Uh, I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best Netflix series? Grey's Anatomy. Uh, I've, I've watched that for years now, and it just keeps getting better and better. Oh, 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 you see. This is our game, our moment, our time. We work hard and play harder. We stay loyal to the game and to our team. We are power, American power. The American, powered by determination. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. Powerful minds. Strong in mind. Strong in body. The American is dedicated to promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. If it is okay to seek help for injuries we can see, then it needs to be okay to seek help for injuries we can't see. Mental health awareness is important because I think a lot of times it goes unnoticed in college athletics. We look after our bodies and it's just as important to look after our mental health. It's time to end the stigma. Related to mental health and seeking help. End the stigma. Halftime in Tampa between the home squad Bulls and the visiting Bearcats tonight here on the American Digital Network. We welcome you back in, Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck, and while we take a look back at some of the conference-wide awards each week, the conference here in the American announces both a Player of the Week and a Freshman of the Week. No surprise when number one met number two on Sunday, UConn prevailed, and Nafisa Collier, such a big part of that, the senior forward, your Player of the Week in the American. Well, Nafisa Collier is probably the most complete play player on the UConn team. She doesn't just shoot the ball. She rebounds the ball, 8.5 rebounds, 22 points, 4.5 blocks in just two games, and she's put UConn back on top. Our player of the week. Meanwhile, our freshman of the week. Things have been going quite well for Ron Huey down there in H-Town. The Houston Cougars last year started their turnaround. This year, some great recruits, including the freshman Tatiana Hill. Well, Tatiana Hill, I mean, she, she's pouring it on as a freshman. I mean, she's got her team sitting in fourth place. She's averaging 12 points, uh, four rebounds, and uh, she came off a career high 17 points out of six out of 12 shooting. So she's really given them that extra oomph that they've needed. Tatiana Hill, your freshman of the week in the American. Nafisa Collier, your player of the week in the American. First half highlights between USF and Cincinnati along with opening half stats when we come back here on ADN. Dominance for a fourth straight year. Quasho from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate the second championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. 
The body is a means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health. And promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. At The American, we know that power isn't for the faint of heart. Power is reserved for the go-getters, the team players, and those who are hungry for victory. We know power because we are power. Join us for the 2019 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship, March 8th through the 11th at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, or a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. There is power in the sportsmanship that is displayed across the American. Power is respecting opponents, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. The American, power for life. A tie ball game here midway through between the Bulls and the Bearcats. Cincinnati quickly back out of the locker room to get in some more shots before the start of the third. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck back with you here on the American Digital Network. Of course, Andy Wontor along the sidelines as well here at the Yingling Center. Take a look back at the first half and some of the highlights here early on. Well, basically, USF came out firing it up and they hit it from three. They got some good uh, rolls with the bucket. And uh, also offensively, they were all over the boards. They made it very difficult for Cincinnati to score, but Cincinnati is one of the best field goal shooting teams in the American sh shooting 48%. So they did not disappoint in what they did in the first half. And Pahadzic had 10 points for the Bulls, helped them establish a 10 point lead midway through that first half. But Imari Thomas with 13 points combined with Akira Goings' 10 points off the bench helped make up for the fact that a couple of the starters for the Bearcats picked up two quick fouls in this one. We take a look at some of the first half stats, both teams look to address turnovers but you see all the shots that are being contested yeah it's a pretty even uh, stat score both both teams I mean uh, ironically Cincinnati out rebounded USF which is uh, pretty encouraging for that team so a pretty even game and that's why it's a tie score and it's a it was a great first half of basketball Bearcats hoping to snap an 11 game losing skid to the Bulls and of all things in that skid here in Tampa third quarter when we come back How do you drive impact for 200 years? By doing it boldly. By building a bridge, breaking a barrier, planting a flag, owning a stage. Because here, we learn by doing and believe the status quo was built to be broken. So be proud, be bold, be Cincinnati. We're two centuries in and we're still creating what's next. We are Boldly Bearcat. Bearcats came in tonight 5-2, and two, looking to find that sixth win on the road. Right now we are even at the half, and joining Andy Courtside now, your first-year head coach for Cincinnati. She's with Michelle clark Hurt. Coach clark Hurt, it was a slow start to the game for your team, but what did you tell them to make sure that they keep the energy that they had going into halftime? Well, I think you just said it, that we just need to keep the momentum and the energy going, uh, making sure we're following through with the game plan and the things that we need to, and... Uh, Get out to the three-point shooters. They made some threes, and uh, just make sure we're rebounding and taking care of the ball. USF isn't a team that is used to being out-rebounded, but is that going to be a major key to this game? 
But I think we just got to make sure that they're a great rebounding team. And so we got to make sure that we're doing the things we need to so we can get a rebound and we can get up and down the floor. And what have you seen out of Imari so far in that first half? Uh, just our aggressiveness. Uh, I think she came back off the bench and gave us a lot in, you know, that second quarter. And that's what we need her to do. Great. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Andy, thank you. Of course, Michelle Clark heard back when she was an assistant, helped lead the Bearcats to two NCAA tournaments in her three years, 2002 and 2003. Take a look at what is still coming up here on the American Digital Network. Of course, we were at Tulsa yesterday, Tampa today. We'll take a couple days off, but Groundhog's Day on Saturday. It'll be back in Greenville, North Carolina, as the Pirates will welcome the Green Wave. Back to Tulsa, SMU collides with the Golden Hurricane. Another trip to Greenville to see the Memphis Tigers. We'll see the Tigers in back-to-back -back ball games. We'll see these Bearcats at Memphis against Melissa McFerrin squad. And then again, the Tigers against the Green Wave. A chance for us to see each team on several occasions throughout this stretch here on the American Digital Network. And again, before we get started with the third quarter, we welcome you back. Great coverage, 15 games here on ADN just for women's basketball alone. Always get to start our year off with the fall sports, wrap up with the spring sports. I know this is the time of year you're always looking forward to. It's a great time of year. It, uh, it's exciting to see who's going to deliver and who's going to break out of their shell and, and, and make it big time. Just when you think you know this conference, you don't know anything. Injuries, all sorts of obstacles can be thrown at you. And this year, that number two seed could be changing from one team in Florida to another if Coach Abe's squad can keep up the momentum of what they're doing. Of course, these Bearcats wouldn't mind snagging that two seed as well. Of course, that number one seed never seems to change, but everything else does. But, you know, you can be in the middle of the pack one day and then be at the bottom of the pack the next day. It just, it's just like one or two games between the winner and the loser. So uh, it, it's a packed, packed house, and you look right there at the standings. You can go, you see where two lanes at number, you know, three and three. Temple's two and five, one win, one loss, and you're, you're up in the top half of the league. I mean, people are still trying to digest the fact that UConn actually has a loss before the NCAA tournament right now. Of course, that lone loss in Waco against a very good Baylor squad. A Baylor squad that's ranked number one in the country right now. So that's kind of catapulted them to the top. Deservedly so. I have a feeling UConn will still have a chance to factor in that top spot, if not in the polls, then by the end of the year. And the championship plays out. Guess where? Right here in Tampa. Of course, Tampa hosted the women's Final Four in 2015. Right back here this year. Goings with a nifty steal there on a set play that was run by Jose Fernandez's team. And they, uh, they uh, knew what was happening. We'll leave the poll question up here a little bit longer regarding which of those four players Set the American single season mark for best free throw percentage. Well, Goins had such a good first half that uh, she's in the mix here in the second half, and and uh, she's a big part of why this game's tied. Appreciate both head coaches speaking with Andy there at halftime. That's another great thing about what we look forward to when Covering the American, our chance to speak with the coaches during the week and, of course, hearing from them during the games. We've learned so much from them over the years. But Hadjic fires one up off the front of the iron, and the Bearcats do not give up a second-chance opportunity. Again, Nakira Goings, big part of the Bearcats' first half. Bearcats only got scoring from four different players in that half, and yet are hanging in tight with the Bulls. She does that coming off the bench tonight. After going, said made 14 starts on the year, and they throw it away. Yeah, that's a little miscommunication. Look at the eyes right there of Sydney Harvey. Uh, that tells a lot. But you know, Shay's a big leader for them. She she really keeps them together. That was just miscommunication. Sophomore and a freshman. Watch how USF uh, plays defense. Goings, got it. She's that, got a dozen. That time going up against Sydney Harvey, and she took her all the way. But normally they get behind that screen and don't give you that direct line drive. It's a 12-point swing. Bearcats erase a 10-point deficit. Now lead by two. Hadjic trying to get back on a roll. Just won't go down, but gets her own miss. 
Although the reason this game has changed the way it has is because of Cincinnati's smothering defense. Both teams have fired up 32 shots, and it's the 33rd. Anna Pahadzic just saying a little prayer afterwards of thank you. Well, she's praising something. Bearcats able to answer. It's not supposed to bounce like that on the road. Well, she got the bounce, Sam Rogers. Been quite, kind of quiet here, but she definitely has run the show for the Bearcats. Sam's a 31 pursuer. Pardon me, a 31% shooter from beyond the arc. The native of Cincinnati. And Pahadzic this time, a little step closer, won't go down. Pahadzic with three three-pointers, five total for the Bulls. As both teams empty-handed on their last offensive possessions. Leverett's having a hard time getting down the floor. He's hoping they slow down and maybe throw it to her. Sydney Harvey doesn't force anything. That's the spot for Pahadzic. Her fourth triple now. And the Bulls are back up. Well, they called her fearless. I'm going to say it again. You can tell she is. I mean, her team barely gets down, and she's rocking and firing it. She's really stepped up this year. For the Bearcats, again, looking to match Antoinette Miller. And she has helped fill the shoes nicely of Anna Owens after Owens graduated a year ago. Well, they are continuing to leave Pahadzic open over there and can't make them pay this time. Miller. Goings for three. Well, if, if, if that starts happening, it's going to be difficult for USF. They've got to get out and, and uh, run them off the line and not let them get their feet set like that. Miller, her third assist. Goings now has a team high 15 points. Only trailing the Bulls, Pahadzic for the game high. A 6-0 run for Cincinnati right now over the past just 30 seconds. Well, early on, Jose Fernandez's squad was going to let Cincinnati have the open three, but now that they've hit a couple, they've definitely got to get out and, and check them. I'd like to see him go inside here. He's just taking a tour around that three-point line. You can say, Angela, why do you want them to go inside? <laughs> I don't know. Hadjic is 5 of 12, but she has made more than she has missed here in the third quarter. I don't really think anyone else has touched the ball on offense in this quarter. I need to go in for a look of her own, and Leverett with the block. That's a big block for her to get Amari Thomas. Miller Gardner now. That's a good sign right there that Septe's back in the game. So whatever she was injured. Looked like she took a bump on the nose. Uh, Tierra Cruz, one of our three officials with that call. A double down, good for them <laughs> on Anna Pahadzic. Timeout by Anna's head coach, Jose Fernandez. Well, I mean, you're not gonna be able to have every shot open. Well, it's 28-28 at the half already. A plenty of scoring here as we have a chance in this quick pause to check back in with Andy Wontor. Well, it's definitely a great game so far. Back and forth to start this second half. But both of these teams have been around the basketball scene for quite some time, and they both have over 600 all-time program victories. So let's put this to the history test. Which team has actually started first in the historical scene? That poll right up on your screen. Let us know your answer. Again, new trivia question for you. We'll get you the answer to the last one when we come back right now. Bearcats up by two on the road against those Bulls. Dominance for a fourth straight year. Quasho from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate the seventh championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. At the American, we know that power isn't for the faint of heart. 
Power is reserved for the go-getters, the team players, and those who are hungry for victory. We know power because we are power. Join us for the 2019 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship, March 8th through the 11th at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. USF student band trying to provide that home court advantage for the Bulls. Cincinnati leads this all-time series 18 to 14. If they find a rare win against the Bulls this year, it's going to be perhaps their three-point shooting. But all well, the Bulls have found the stroke as well from downtown. We knew we knew both teams needed to cover the three. Hedrick is obviously she's hit five threes in the in the half, and now both teams have uh, exceeded their. Uh, percentages for the day your current trivia question well your odds have improved it's simply 50 50 did the Bearcats or the Bulls start their women's basketball program first both programs over 600 wins in their history a previous trivia question was which individual has had the best free throw shooting season in American history last year was a great year for free throw shooting the top three marks all time all occurred last year. We'll have the answer to that in just a moment. Leverett, they double down on her. And we are going to get free throws, I believe, coming up for Henshaw. Okay, so now Cincinnati, she's pretty crafty over there. She comes with a box and one. They run a man-to-man -man on Pahajic, and they run a zone on the other four players to just try to trip them up again. Each team has only shot three free throws so far. I believe we have free throws coming up here. That is the case. Miller picks up her second foul. We'll head to the charity stripe when we come back right now. Coach Clark Hurd squad up by a pair. How do you drive impact for 200 years? By doing it boldly, by building a bridge, breaking a barrier, planting a flag, owning a stage. Because here we learn by doing and believe the status quo was built to be broken. So be proud, be bold, be Cincinnati. We're two centuries in, and we're still creating what's next. We are Boldly Bearcat. This is our game, our moment, our time. We work hard and play harder. We stay loyal to the game and to our team. We are power, American power. The American, powered by determination. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, or a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. There is power in the sportsmanship that is displayed across the American. Power is respecting opponents, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. Bearcats thought they were going to come to Tampa perhaps and uh, be able to take advantage of a shorthand bull squad to find a rare win against Jose Fernandez, but he hasn't given up on this season just yet. 
as he is getting the most out of the players he has available. And a lot of that's discipline, rebounding, and also taking advantage of their free throws. I, I admire what he's done. I, I watch him pretty intensely and am surprised that he doesn't lose it more often. Uh, you know, just having all these players that are not as experienced as what he's used to having. He's, he's a perennial power and it, he has so much respect, his team does, but um, he's really getting the most that he can out of his players and it's very impressive to watch. Tamara Henshaw this year is 14 of 16, now 14 of 17 free throws. You can send your complaints to Angela for bringing up these free throws as a talking point. Uh, but again, her teammate, Sydney Harvey, 88.7%. This stays with the Bulls. The record was set last year by Kitty Aloxa, who went 111 of 115 free throws. Mentioned the top three all-time single season marks occurred last year. Anna Owens for these Bearcats. Shot 93% last year. Shook Dixon of Tulsa shot 88% last year. And the Bearcats just can't get this ball back. That was a great drive by Septe. Uh, I guess she does have a little, uh, so she, what, what did you say she had? A little... I, I said a bloody nose. You no, know, or something like got knocked on the nose. But, I mean, she almost got... Yeah. That nose looked like it could be a little bit swollen. So, yeah, that shows the toughness that she has. She drove hard to the hole and, and scored it. She has a deviated septa. As right now, Antoinette Miller will work around the perimeter. Her one and only dad joke of the year. That's uh, that one got me, I have to say. Single digits on the shot clock, and the Bulls, after tying it up, the last trip down again with backcourt woes. Well, they're, they're their own worst enemy here. Two extremely unforced errors. Uh, you know, coach is pretty furious there on the sidelines. Well, he doesn't have anybody to go to. You know, you like to kind of make a quick change just to send a message, but. Now he's just hoping some people will listen to him. Well, to Henshaw's point, uh, you don't, you're not supposed to turn your back on the sideline. You're supposed to put your back to the sideline. So I think she was expecting her to, to see her. Inside, shot doesn't go for Puckett, but the putback does. As Puckett able to follow up her own miss for her first two points on the night. Well, unfortunately, uh, the ball hasn't really gotten into the paint all day. Right now, Cincinnati only has six points in the paint. USF has nine points in the paint. So you can say it's a pretty guard-oriented attack, and if you're open at three-point range, it's pretty much time to fire. The Bearcats team right now up by two on the road. They're 11-1 and one at home this year, back there at Fifth Third Arena. And the great renovation that's taken place there, but they're only two and six this year away from Cincinnati. And rides momentum here into Tampa tonight and pick up a win. And USF's going to gift wrap another one for them. I think that I have to give the credit to the Bearcats, though, that they're overplaying. And instead of backdooring and getting that backdoor action, they're kind of standing too much, USF is, and it's causing them to knife the passing lane. Bearcats trying to establish a two-score lead. Their largest advantage has been by five. Good patience, good ball reversal by Cincinnati. Thomas likes the matchup. Double team help came in with Septe. And the freshman helps force the turnover. Septe. Well, that's that, uh, that, that drive from... Uh, Foreign country there, Tavia. Open look and trying to find those second chance points. How about a third opportunity here as that rebound tracked down by Sifa? So Miller will slow things down. Again, Cincinnati, no freshman this year. And we've got free throws coming up for Fofo Sifa. Meanwhile, a lot of teams in the American are anywhere from five, six, seven, eight freshmen like at Wichita State this year. USF brought in a bunch. Although, again, a lot of the freshmen for USF already have international playing experience representing their home countries. 
Yeah, for the most part, Cincinnati hasn't been able to drive much because of the way that USF is clogging the lane and allowing the perimeter. But that was a good drive that she was able to get through the seam of the defense and get to the rim. Tifa able to make one of two, now has three points. One of six scores tonight for Cincinnati. The big scores again going to the team high off the bench with 15. Amari Thomas, the sophomore, with 13 points, six boards. The most productive starter. Shot clock, single digits. Lisa Septe and Latvia able to come through with another pair. It's almost like you're afraid to stand in front of her because she's coming. You know she's coming. She's coming hard. She left the 10 pin standing, I think. Septe now with 10 points. Second bowl in double digits. Both teams have had runs, and it's a back and forth ball game with the Bearcats up by one now. Mari Thomas times in, matches the team high of 15. Mari Thomas going 7 of 11, 15 points. She just needs to touch it just a little bit more. She'll take it any way she can get it. She was our conference player of the week a week back. See her numbers so far. Hadjic already has five triples. Hands off to Septe, also in double digits. Trying to get their teammates involved. Sydney Harvey. Yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna give the assist to Septe because she's been driving so hard that people started paying attention to her. They left Harvey because she's been kind of quiet and then picked up Septe and, and she hit the open jumper. Harvey's two triples have accounted for all of her six points so far today. Inside to Thomas, matched up with Leverett. And I don't think you can complain with how Leverett defended her, but Thomas just gets that one to go. Well, she knew that if she stepped in the lane, they were going to double her, so she kind of stepped out and threw that little soft hook, and it was a good read by her. By the way, we're tied. It was 28-28 at halftime. Both teams have put up 18 points here in the third quarter. And a chance for the Bulls to add a couple more. There's the toughness again by Pahedjik. Uh, she just really, she's not going to be denied. She, she hasn't really touched the ball for a couple minutes, so she's going to take it hard to the hole. The 10 lead changes in this ball game. You saw we've been tied for almost six minutes of game action. Both teams shooting 42% from the field, so that's that's a good sign for USF because that's a better shooting night than what they've had. And then their three-point shooting is off the charts, 50% for Cincinnati, 5 of 10, and 44% for USF for 8 for 18, which you'll take any day. Bulls had missed four straight free throws before that make for Enna. She's got 20 points, the first to 20 tonight. Bearcats down by one, can hold for the final shot here in the third quarter. Inside the Yangling Center in Tampa, Florida. Bearcats and Bulls meeting for the first time here in conference play this year. Inside to Thomas, underneath the basket. Bearcats back on top. They are in the driver's seat with one quarter left on the road tonight. Bearcats, one of the hottest teams in the American. A four game winning streak coming into the Sunshine State this evening. Going to hand those bulls a rare loss at home. Bernie scores three strikeouts in a row. Dominance for a fourth straight year. Quasho from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate the second championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is a means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. 
Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health. And promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. At The American, we know that power isn't for the faint of heart. Power is reserved for the go-getters, the team players, and those who are hungry for victory. We know power because we are power. Join us for the 2019 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship, March 8th through the 11th at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. Well, the Bearcats able to sneak in a score right before the e end of the third quarter, and they have the one-point edge fourth quarter coming up, and a chance for us to quickly check back in with Andy. Well, the leading Bearcat of the night is quite obviously Imari Thomas. She's just a sophomore and a young sophomore at that. Now, co coming into this week, we got a chance to spoke with uh, Coach Clark Hurd on the phone, and she said that Imari, her biggest challenge is actually getting out of her own head. She has a very high basketball IQ, and she says that she can kind of sometimes get in her own head and worry too much about the things she's seen on the film instead of just playing and letting things go. I'd say Imari is doing pretty good tonight. Amari Thomas uh, was a 17-year-old freshman last year, turned 17 mid-season. Now just barely old enough to vote. You'd see the Bearcats bench there. Obviously, Michelle Clark Hurd, your first-year head coach, brings in a whole new coaching staff. But even her staff grew. She brought in a freshman player this year who ultimately, because of some health concerns, will not be able to play out her basketball career. Talking about uh, Zenzele uh, Pasamaka Vidal and... Well, what they did is they're going to honor her scholarship, and she is now a student coach on that bench for the next four years as she pursues her degree at Cincinnati. Just a, a great gesture from the Bearcats, and I know they love having Zenzele uh, still a part of the team. Go back to Amari Thomas for a minute. Just remember, she's only 5'10". People think she's like 6'2 in there. She's 5'10", and she plays like she's 6'2". And that's not the look the Bulls wanted to give up early, let alone a second chance here. Nakira Goings, we talked about Thomas, but Goings has been a big factor off the bench tonight. They needed her in that first half when starters got in foul trouble. Thomas looking for a third chance opportunity. Well, there she is kind of working over Shea Leverett. And, uh, you know, she, she just bodies her up enough to get her underneath right there with the little body. No, and then just, I mean, she's only 5'10". I mean, Leverett's 6'2". Goings tries to draw some contact. Oh, they're going to get Goings for an offensive film. Wow. So Sydney Harvey forces the officials to make a decision there, and they give her credit for getting in defensive position in time. Both of these teams are super well coached because... Every time they've tried to run a set, they're, they're executing it. So we'll see what happens this nine minutes and 13 seconds, which team executes the ball and gets it in the right player's hands. Neither team has any players with more than three fouls. For the Bearcats, it's both Warren and Sifa. For the Bulls, Leverett with three. But that is not a storyline coming into the final nine minutes, at least not yet. And it was 28-28 at halftime. Cincinnati outscores USF in the third, 20-19. And here we are, crunch time between these two, a valuable win within reach for both teams. Basically a two-man game. Thomas just could not get it all the way out to Miller. In for a closer look, and the shot blocked and kept in play by Riser, but we have a whistle. Well, back to that word, that fearless word. She goes up, but that looked like a pretty clean block there. But the way she contorts her body in the air, you kind of look, it looks like she might have gotten hacked. But uh, that's the kind of game that Enna plays. She's very physical. She, she's, she presses the action as much as she can, and you know if she's open, she's going to shoot it. Hadjic, four of six now from the charity stripe. That was her 21st point, the game high. 
over 22 now. And that whistle against Riser is her third foul. Thomas and Goings are the two players that they pretty much clear out for. Thomas handed it off there to Sam Rogers. It's a long two with a foot inside the arc, off the mark, and right into the arms for the Bulls and Tamara Henshaw. Leverett battling for position down low. And they are going to force the issue there. Nice job drawing attention as Nakira Goings. Very physical down there, and they'll call her for the hold. It's kind of a surprising foul by her because uh, they're not really going into Leverett that often, so I'm not sure what her, what her need to foul her is in that situation. Leverett just four points tonight, does have eight rebounds. Coach Hernandez saw that turnover coming. And that would have been a turnover had he not called that timeout. So Jose Fernandez wants the timeout. His Bulls up by one with the basketball. 7.51 to go in Tampa. Your Cats and Bulls on a Wednesday night in the American. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. How do you drive impact for 200 years? By doing it boldly, by building a bridge, breaking a barrier, planting a flag, owning a stage. Because here, we learn by doing and believe the status quo was built to be broken. So be proud, be bold, be Cincinnati. We're two centuries in and we're still creating what's next. We are Boldly Bearcat. A reminder, we see these Bearcats next February 13th when they make their trip to Memphis. We just got done seeing the Bulls last weekend for a second time over there in Dallas. They are looking to end a two-game skid against Memphis and the Mustangs with a win today against Cincinnati. Bearcats trying to stretch a four-game winning streak if they can find a fifth straight win here today in Tampa. All that coming up here on the American Digital Network, a midweek matchup and a Saturday matchup uh, the rest of the way. Check back in with Andy. Well, Lincoln, according to the stats line, we've got some pretty obvious candidates for MVP, but it's not up to the stats. It's up to you. You let us know who is the MVP of this very close, still to be decided, up until the last second kind of game that we're having here. Is it going to be a Bearcat or a Bull? Let us know, and your answer, it might be the right one. Lincoln. Thank you very much, Andy. Again, uh, so that's her final question. There's really no wrong answer to that one. The last trivia question she asked uh, was reminding us the fact that both these programs of over 600 wins. Cincinnati started up its women's program in 1971. One year later, the Bulls would open their doors for their women's program in 1972. Cincinnati, 668 all-time wins. USF, 641. Cincinnati dominated this series early before the American came around. Uh, but again, it's an 11-game winning streak for the Bulls in this rivalry now. Step back. And a three-pointer off the side of the iron out of the right hand from Harvey. And here come the Bearcats with a chance to reclaim the lead with a field goal of any form. We're working inside. Leverett holds her ground against Thomas. Driving Miller. 
That's a good look with seven seconds left. Just cannot knock it down. A fresh shot clock here, though, for Cincinnati. Good inside position by USF, but it's, it's usually a long rebound, and they've been short inside on two of those. Another bite at the apple for Sam Rogers. And she runs into her own teammate, and now a foot race the other way. Louisa Septe. Wow. Talk about physical. She, she was so physical. I mean, her, her body's like rock solid, that girl. She, she totally just blew the other girl away, and they got the offensive board. All that with a couple of tissues stuffed up to the nostrils. Now, she missed it, but Sydney Harvey was there to clean things up with her hustle. So who's the go-to here? Obviously, Thomas inside right now. They're, they're kind of shadowing that, making it difficult. And that's a shot clock violation, did not hit the rim, so the Bulls will have to inbound this ball with 6.07 to go. Big defensive stop there by USF. Uh, just uh, shadowing that interior pass to Amari Thomas, and that's where they want to go with it. Are they going to extend their defense now and try to uh, mix it up a little bit? Game where the Bulls, again, have only had seven players available to them. Bearcats have played nine. Harvey, the freshman, looks over to her head coach, the two-time freshman of the week already in the American this year. Harvey matched up with Miller. Green creates the open look just a tad strong from Behagic, who's now 5 of 13 from downtown. Zifa. And the three-pointers just not falling, but another offensive board for Ofo. Long rebound, folks. All their, all their shots have come off long, and they're just too, in too tight. Cincinnati still has not scored here in the fourth quarter, and we're almost midway through. Well, the weak side's really staying in tight. Thomas with a nifty spin. Still can't take the lid off that rim, and the possession arrow favors USF. This is her signature move right there. She likes to spin in the inside, able to use that right-hand hook. It was Puckett who went up for the rebound, but was tied up by a pair of Bulls. Neither team has scored here for a little bit, so. It's a 4-0 quarter right now for USF. And a touch foul from Deja Puckett. I think so far for USF, Luis Septe is uh, is really the unsung hero of this team. She She's making the passes. She's finding the open player. She's driving when they need her to. Um, they obviously have Harvey blanketed. They have their best player defender on Harvey, and Septe has really, even though Hedgick has done a great deal shooting, I think she's a silent, silent leader there. A couple of teams that were playing postseason basketball last year, Cincinnati and the WNIT. Bulls in the NCAA tournament. Looking to end that drought with the left-handed layup from Antoinette Miller. That's a huge steal there by Antoinette Miller. First two points of the fourth quarter for the Bearcats. And even with the drought, they only trail now by one. See if they can turn their defense up just a little, another notch. And that pass was deflected. So it'll stay here with the Bulls as they were looking for Septe. Yeah, here's the steal. She just taps it from behind and then keeps her motor going. That's a, that's a huge steal. That's, I mean, M Miller right there. She hasn't had the game of her life, but that's, that's the play of the day right there. Junior out of Detroit, eight, eight points, five rebounds, four assists. This one's still anybody's ball game. A 51-50 advantage for the Bulls at home here on the American Digital Network. Powerful minds. Strong in mind. Strong in body. The American is dedicated to promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. If it is okay to seek help, 
for injuries we can see. Then it needs to be okay to seek help for injuries we can't see. Mental health awareness is important because I think a lot of times it goes unnoticed in college athletics. We look after our bodies and it's just as important to look after our mental health. It's time to end the stigma. Related to mental health and seeking help. End the stigma. At The American, we know that power isn't for the faint of heart. Power is reserved for the go-getters, the team players, and those who are hungry for victory. We know power because we are power. Join us for the 2019 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship, March 8th through the 11th at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. We just got back underway. Antoinette Miller called for a foul, setting up these free throws. And Shaw with one more to go is 0 for 3 today from the charity stripe. And in the pregame, we talked about their ability to hit the free throws down the stretch. There's one for four. She has missed more free throws today than she had all season when she was 14 for 16 coming into tonight. And right now, the Bulls up by a pair, back on defense. A lot of you chiming in on some of your favorites. Antoinette Miller is certainly among them. Obviously, a lot of Bearcat fans tuning in. Certainly some international families as well, watching from overseas. We've got a good one. Miller's just starting to light it up. That time, they run a little curl play for her, and it's actually a uh, clear out. For her to go one-on-one -on -one and, and the help's just a little too late. Wide open is Septe for three, but can't make him pay. And there's a foul on the rebound effort. A foul by Sam Rogers. A um, little bit of extra activity underneath there. It's a good bailout for USF. That was that was a tough shot. I think each team only had three free throw attempts in the first half. Seeing a few more trips to the charity stripes since then. Leverett hasn't uh, done much on the offensive end, but she's had eight rebounds for him. It's the tenth free throw attempted this half by the Bulls. They've made half of them. Well, everyone from here on out are going to be big. Cincinnati has only attempted two free throws this half. I'm sure their fans are mindful of that number. And the Bulls edge ahead by one. There's going to be a lot of dribble penetration coming. They're going to try to get quality shots in here. They're going to go high-low. Well, who knows how the final three minutes will unfold here, but one of these two teams will be kicking themselves. This was a winnable ball game for both. Nice look for Goings. And she's got one of the bigger fan contingencies in our comments sections in tonight's broadcast. And Goings keeping the Bearcats' hopes of a five-game winning streak alive with those numbers tonight. Well, they have 23 points coming from the bench and uh, 18 from Goins herself. He had made 14 starts this year, coming off the bench for a sixth time tonight. They needed her. Leverett. She'll head to the charity stripe now. Well, that's a that's a tough call. Uh, great effort on both ends. Uh, looked like you know she might have taken an extra step there, but they gave her the euro step. <laughs> well, it's appropriate. All, yeah. all of her teammates are. Yeah, that's true. Except she's not. But but other than that, she deserves it, right? She's from Georgia. The the state. Yeah. And so at the line here is Leverett, a 63% free throw shooter, averages 7.7 .7 rebounds tonight. Five points, eight boards. Six points, eight boards. A little tentative on that shot. Nice, strong follow through. You think Cincinnati's in a rush to get back uh, to single digit weather, or you think they may stick around in Tampa I think until, they, their, until I think, their weekend matchup? I think they're not even thinking about it. I, I'll tell you the truth. They're, they're thinking about how hot they are right now and how much they want to win this game. Again, wins against Temple, Tulsa, Houston, and Memphis. Looking to knock off USF. 
Not sure what they're doing here. And again, that baseline, it's in the way. Of course, the Bearcats, next outing Saturday, will be against UConn. No field goals the last uh, four minutes for, four minutes 29 for USF. Everything's been at the free throw line. And the Bearcats force a turnover. The five count will give it back to Cincinnati. Tamara Henshaw's had some difficulty um, in her passing here. Might be that their defense, obviously, but. A 15 footer off the mark and they can't take advantage of the turnover a moment ago from the Bulls. Nobody wants to run away with this one. No, they're going to keep this close till the end because it makes it exciting. Well, one four alignment. Somebody needs to get to the ball. Septa. Down by one point, so they can't stall here. Inside the final two minutes of regulation. Leverett on Thomas, blocked by Imari Thomas. Second chance for Leverett, as she sticks with it. Yeah, Leverett sometimes has a little trouble with her handles down there, and she did a great job of going and getting the missed shot and putting it back strong. Big bucket for her. Well, we mentioned the importance of this win, in part because both of these teams collide with the top two teams in the American this weekend. Cincinnati against UConn, and that's a big stroke from Antoinette Miller. Meanwhile, the Bulls will have a rematch of their war on I-4 on Sunday against UCF after already suffering a rare loss this year against the Knights. Bulls down by just one inside the final minute. Set day 10 points. Hadjic has the game high 22. She was open at the bottom of your screen, and this ball is going back to Cincinnati. Jose Fernandez has to be careful. Now that was an interesting call, though. Uh, I felt like she stuffed the ball and her foot was out of bounds. So I wonder if they're going to replay this ball. I think, I think they might replay this. I think this. we saw a gesture for a replay. Yeah, it, it's definitely. I, I feel like if we can see the replay, um, that should be USF's ball. Of course, I never was an official, but that's my call. You can drink. She goes on the drive. She stuffs it. Well, if that ball had already hit the baseline, it looked like it went right back off the right hand of Sydney Harvey. That was not con a conclusive look, but our officials are getting a few more looks at it. But what a great replay by our replay booth. On demand? Yes. Great work, guys. This will be the one of the angles you'll look at. So does it hit her right hand again right there? Yeah. I think that's the right call. If that ball is being, if it then touched the baseline, which it did, I think it went off Sydney Harvey. I think this is going to be Cincinnati basketball. My opinion does not matter. I'm still not saying anything, but yeah, I think you're right now. Good call by the officials. That's why I never was one. Good defense, more importantly. What what a defensive play right there to stop the drive, not Fowler, one of the top players on USF's team, and then uh, get the ball back. One-point ball game inside the final minute. Going to have to get a foul. Cincinnati is not in the bonus. I guess they're going to run, run it out here and then try to get one last shot. See the separation in the two clocks. field goal make this a three-point ball game or more that's a shot clock violation throwings dribbled out the time they almost had a turnover and then the bulls did hold them 
USF is going to get this ball and have a chance to hold for the final look. How much time do you like to be to have on the clock when you take that final shot? Well, I think because he's down one, I want a little time on the clock. I like to shoot with like, you know, probably six seconds left on the clock so I can get a put back uh, or, or, you know, definitely come out. If you can get an open shot, I'm going to take it whenever I can. I'm not going to be too crafty and hold it, but if I can get a put back, and they are a great offensive team, I'm going to send everybody to the offensive glass. For Cincinnati, any defensive foul leads to free throws, potentially putting the Bulls at the line to tie or win it. The thing I think they're going to try to do is get the ball to the rim somehow. Yes, they could take the three, but why? Why not go get a two? So I'm looking for my set day to get the ball and maybe drive hard or go into Leverett or maybe Harvey off the drive. Those Bearcats have the lead. They just need to make a stomp. 57-56. We've been tied nine times, 15 lead changes. It all comes down to this. If they can get a position where they get a, get a quick shot, and they can, uh, and if they miss it, they can get a quick foul and get the ball back too. So that's then they'd only be down by three if they make both shots. So either way, get the best shot you can at the best, the quickest time that you can. Both teams were hot in the third quarter. They've had to grind it out for points here in the fourth, where each team is just in single digits with nine points apiece. Louisa Septe again, a little bloody nose today, but she knows. And she is going to be needed to fight through it. However they put those in there, I'm not sure how they're staying, but good for their bent, good for their trainers to find a way to shove those in there. I'm sure there's an art to it. So 16 seconds, yeah, I think he'll go quickly here. Inshaw will trigger the pass. She has Septe right by her. Hadjic is your leading scorer for the Bulls with 22. Harvey. A field goal wins it for USF, presumably. Nine on the clock. Thomas picks up a Hadjic, fires one up, and Cincinnati, as time, I believe they will say, has expired, is going to be improving to six and two. Now, understandably, they're going to review the monitors. The only way USF has a chance is if this ball goes back to them with at least 0.3 seconds on the clock. If those officials put anything less than 0.3, uh, the Bearcats are headed to UConn as the second hottest team in the league. I kind of have my hands on my head on that one because they didn't have enough time to make those passes and put the ball in Henshaw's hands. Henshaw wasn't going to be taking the shot, so they needed to keep the ball in the shooter's hands. Here they they have they have to go for the drive, which you know. And then there's Henshaw Shaw with the rebound, but um, I didn't hear it going. She did not allow the easy putback on the weak side there. Uh, that just took too long for that play to evolve. So again, they're looking to see, and that's your ball game. Cincinnati has snapped an 11 game losing streak against USF. The Bearcats are six and two in the American. Only one team has a longer winning streak. And of course, they collide with those Huskies this weekend. That's a heartbreaker for USF. Uh, what a great game plan. What a lot of heart and soul for USF, but a well, a well coached team. Uh, Cincinnati coming in here, being tenacious. They had several different angles that they could come at you. Mar Thomas in the inside, and you had you had goings on the outside. What what a great combination! Well, it gives us a chance to check in with first year head coach Michelle Clark Hurd after her victory. She's now with Andy. Coach Clark Hurd, uh, what a way to win a game. Uh, what was going through your head in those final seconds? Well, I'm just really proud of our group. Uh, you know, we dropped one at Central Florida, same same exact situation where we were up by one. Uh, just really proud of how we adjusted and was able to get a stop. So proud of this group. Uh, this was a long time coming. Hadn't, they hadn't won here in a while. So we're really excited about that.
and obviously we're going to talk about your leading scorer, Imari Thomas, but what about your senior coming off the bench? What kind of spark was she tonight? She was huge for us, really, really. She's been nursing her ankle, and uh, so we're really glad we needed her today. She stepped up. This was a huge team win for us, so I'm just really excited for this team and for our program. Thanks, Coach. Now joining us is Amari. Talk about this game and just what it means to you guys to be able to pull out such a close one in, in such a crazy fashion. Yeah, we worked so hard, and we did drop one at UCF that we wanted back, so we knew in a close game that we couldn't let that happen again. What did Coach tell you guys at halftime after that slow start to the first half? She told us that we worked too hard to get here to just let it go, and we needed to step up and play our game, so that's what we did second half. Thanks, Amari, and congratulations. Back to you guys. Andy, thank you. Again, that loss was at UCF, 56 to 55. They have not lost since then. They return to the state of Florida, pick up the win. Their only other loss in conference to UConn. They will have a rematch coming up on Saturday. Meanwhile, these Bulls will have their rematch of the war on I-4 as they will collide with UCF for a second time this year. For Andy Wontor, along with Angela Beck, I'm Lincoln Rose. The Cincinnati Bearcats, one of the hottest teams in the American now. They are six and two, winners of five in a row. Big road victory here tonight in Tampa, 57 to 56, as they're able to hang on with first year head coach Michelle Clark Hurd. Big thanks to our entire AD and crew in Tampa. We will see you on Saturday as our coverage continues on the American Digital Network.